GM, GM, and welcome back to Music NFT Radio Podcast. We're here with another episode, and we're here today to say that music NFTs are better than PFPs. You heard it here first. Music NFTs, they're bringing hella value to the community. And we're also going to talk about how a music NFT can be a PFP itself, like Violetta's new collection. So it's beyond just the simple idea that music NFTs are better than PFPs. We know there's great PFP collections out there, but there's also a lot of questionable ones and rugs. And with music NFTs, it's oftentimes an artist bringing their whole career to the blockchain. And I think we've just seen a lot of great music NFTs, and we want to talk about how they compare to some of the PFP collections or how music NFT artists are tapping into some of the things that PFPs use, like rarity, like traits, like metadata, and organizing the collection the right way to appeal to those communities using music in Web3. So we got Violetta Zeroni here on Music NFT Radio. If you're on YouTube or any podcast site, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. We have an amazing YouTube channel and come on to the live spaces on Twitter as well. But yeah, we got V here today to talk about it. She's got a hot take. She's got something to say to the people because there's just so many PFP collectors and not enough of them have tapped in the music NFTs yet. Hey, Dill, what's going on? Thank you so much for having me. And yes, we are full of hot takes. I've you know, of course, uh, in the NFT space, hot takes are popular, but also sometimes they have some actual foundation, uh, you know, and uh, both you and I have been in the music NFT space and in the NFT space in general for a really long time. Um, so I feel like we can't afford to give some hot takes here and there sometimes. Well, yeah, I mean, you were just saying it on the space and I'm like, let's talk about it because this is an important topic. It's something I've already covered in the other episode where I was saying why PFP collectors need music NFTs. And as a music artist who's been in Web3 for over two years now, what I can say is the biggest opportunity for us is to bring more of those PFP collectors, bring more of those people that have a MetaMask into music NFTs because there's literally thousands and you know, hundreds of thousands of people that have MetaMask. They probably have an NFT in a wallet, but they don't have a music NFT yet. Or at least they don't have like a really well thought out music NFTs. You know, there's been experimental ones, maybe some experimental audio type of NFTs over the years. Uh, there's also been like maybe celebrity projects that really didn't pan out into anything. But there's real independent music NFTs that are making innovation on the blockchain, just like you, Violetta, just like my collection and so many others. And that's what the collectors are missing right now is where we see the value growing every day. And what we see as the future of music NFTs, it's not just this celebrity stuff. You know, those people aren't actually paying attention and building in Web3 every day. So I think that that's why we can give this hot take is because we see the potential and all of our collectors see it as well because they've done really well by supporting our music. So yeah, V, why don't you talk more about it? Why do you think that, you know, music NFTs are going to take over and make an impact this year, especially compared to the PFPs? Yeah. Well, first of all, I wanted to say that, um, you know, the first person that I heard saying, Music NFTs will be as big as PFPs, uh, but actually much bigger. I It was you. I heard you say that. For the first time, I saw a tweet of yours that said that. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. Probably that tweet got me thinking, right? And um, now, after a year of being in the NFT space and having owned a lot of PFP projects, music NFT projects, having made music NFTs, I've minted over 8,000 music NFTs in the past year. Um, and I've seen the progress and the development of a lot of music projects and PFP projects. A conclusion where you know I've realized that PFPs it's hard to distinguish between PFP projects that have an actual 
mission and an actual roadmap and an actual person with value behind them and PFP projects that are just putting JPEGs out and that are building off of hype that comes from marketing, pretty much. Um, and it, like we were just mentioning a second ago with LTO, you know, Sketchy Apes community with Hashlips. Hashlips is an incredible developer. Like he is a legend in the blockchain, you know, solidity development. And he's he's put out utility to people that don't even own his project before he even asks for anything, right? So if you want to follow this person that has so much to give to the world and he gives to the world before asking it for anything in return, then you and you want to go the extra mile, then you can buy one of his sketchy apes. And then on the other end, you have projects that just put out JPEGs. They do an insane, amazing marketing campaign and they don't have anything ready. <laughs> they sell a dream, you know, and people love buying dreams because they see a better future. You know, they feel invested, they feel involved, they feel like it couldn't happen without them, right? And so they buy these JPEGs of, you know, PFP characters. A lot of the times they're really bad looking too, you know, because founders a lot of the times are entrepreneurs. They're not artists and they pay artists a fee to draw, but the artists are not directly involved. And so they don't necessarily put in a lot of the times. So, so the JPEG you actually buy is not actually a piece of art. It's a token into a business, so-called alleged business, that does not start delivering until later on. It's very rare that PFP projects actually come in with a delivered roadmap, utility, actual business already happening. It happens, I don't know, 0.5% of the time, you know? So, yeah, whereas when it comes to a music artist... It's not like you come into a space, right, into the NFT space and you say, I'm going to sell an NFT collection so that I can learn how to play guitar. <laughs> or like, if you buy this, then I'm going to learn how to play guitar and put out a guitar album. And then it's going to be the biggest guitar album ever. And it's going to win a Grammy. And it's going to become a brand. And we're going to take over, you know, Hollywood and whatever, you know. When you put it like that, it sounds ridiculous. But no, 100% of the artists, music artists, and of course, visual artists that come into Web3 come with a already developed, uh, delivered roadmap and utility, a piece of art. And they would be doing what they're doing without Web3 as well. You know, that's the thing. You, both you and me, come in with an album. We, we're not doing a found, uh, fundraise or a crowdfund, right, to make an album. No, we mint an album. That's done. That costs, like, it can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to make an album, really. And let's not talk about the time that it takes to, you know, write the songs and the decades that it took to learn how to sing and write a song. So we've done the work. We come into the space, sell something, so we allow people to be part of our community, and for an artist to blow up, you know, it's it's so much more likely that an artist is going to have a career of following than it is for a founder who puts out a JPEG of, you know, all due respect to everybody, you know, uh, I don't know, a cat or a dog or like, who the hell are you? You know what I mean? It's like, so, whereas when you look up Dill, you see he's got 2 million monthly listeners on Spotify, hundreds of thousands of followers across all the platforms. He's actually performing. He's traveling the world. I mean, would you not want to invest in that guy? I would, you know? And so, yeah, that's kind of my take. And so I really think that right now people are having fun gambling a lot of the times. They just gamble with PFPs. They, they, they take advantage of the speculative nature of crypto and therefore of NFTs and gamble. And there's nothing wrong with it. But when you go out into the world, I was at South by Southwest last week and I was talking to people like VC investors, actually. And I was saying, you know, there's like this project in NFTs. It's called Pudgy Penguins. Like, what the what? What the hell is Pudgy Penguins? <laughs> you know, what? like, how is these people ever going to be taken seriously by anyone who you know what I mean? So 
Whereas you put out a music artist and it's like, well, of course, this is an artist. Record labels have made billions, make billions every year off of music artists. And now for the first time, people can make a lot of money through music. You know, so sorry, long-winded, but that's my take. I think once the hype and the gambling and speculative nature of crypto kind of dies down, you know, um, and especially if we want mass onboarding, I don't think we can continue gambling. This is not a game. This is real. Blockchain can change the world, the blockchain technology, and it has changed it and it will change it even more. And it should be taken somewhat seriously, in my opinion. Let's go. I agree with you 100%. And I think it's not that PFPs are all bad. There's plenty of good PFP communities. It's just that music NFTs are underrepresented and undersupported compared to, you know, people see Bored Apes and they think, oh, this is what's going to work for an NFT 10,000 generative PFP project. But they're missing out on some of the real use cases that are here that are working for music NFTs. And I think we can make a difference by just letting people know really what's going on with music NFTs, really what we're building here, really what they're getting into, because there is more utility. You know, I've, I have a, so much behind my career. You have so much behind your career. And when you compare that to some of what's available out there, it's a clear difference. And so I think we can make a difference for, by just bringing more people into the NFT community, into music NFTs, telling them, hey, get some of this music, support an artist who's been working hard for a long time instead of minting that next scam or rug and it's really a conversation that needs to happen with people is like hey here are why music nfts are great they have rarity you know they have mints they have collections there's amazing music they have everything a pfp offers and more so why not support these music nfts that's how i look at it and we're going to bring more and more people into the community by bringing up these conversations and saying, hey, here's why you need to pay more attention to music NFTs. And it's not all what people think. You know, a lot of people just think about streaming royalties or all this different stuff. But we've seen the value of true community and utility and everything like that. And so I think utility plays a big role in it, too. And V, maybe you could talk about some of the utility. You know, I've offered music festivals, concerts. We have Webstock. We have uh, different uh, NFT conferences we've offered access to. We got the community behind us. And V, you've done a lot as well. So why don't you talk about it since we have you here? Because your utility is just amazing. And I, and I don't think it compares to what you get with a lot of PFPs because PFPs, they often do one-time utility, a one big party with someone moderately cool there, or, you know, one, one event, or even like, you know, one of the worst things, in my opinion, that I see so often is like these giveaway NFTs, where they're just going to do all, they're going to blow all their funding on giveaways, and then it's like, all right, well, what's the utility after your mint is done and you're done with your giveaways, right? So... Yeah, I mean, there's more to offer with music NFTs, so maybe you could talk about some of your utility too. For sure. I think, um, you know, what you're saying is correct. Everything that you offer uh, with your project basically makes the project. So, um, because otherwise it's just a piece of, yeah, a piece of digital, you know, a digital asset, but it doesn't represent anything unless, you know, it, it offers something. And so, you know, especially for a music artist, um, I think utility is really, really fundamental, like really important. So, and I've learned this from you as well. Some of the utility that I offer is, well, first of all, I like to say music is utility. Music is art. And we've been brainwashed that music should be free, but music should not be free because it's not free to make and it's not free <laughs> to distribute. Um, and it shouldn't be free because otherwise it just gets devalued more and more. So first of all, you get music. Personally, I don't put my music out on streaming platforms anymore. So really the only way that you can access my music is through my NFTs. So that's, I would say, the first utility. Second utility is that you can explore the music to a further level through the development of the art, you know, because a lot of the times, especially, especially if you pair your music with... Um, generative art like I've done or like you've done as well 
um, you basically extend uh, the narrative of the music through visuals. And that's something that in Web 2, we were never able to do. Like I have 5,200 artworks for five songs. So that allows the listener deeper into your narrative. Then, you know, by just holding one, I play a concert on Zoom for my community every week. At the same time, for a year, I haven't missed a day. So you get consistent entertainment and consistent you know, relationship with the artist every single week. Um, then vinyl records, free tickets for a lifetime to all my shows, free signed posters, custom songs. If you have a certain amount or combination of NFTs across my collection, um, collections, you can actually request custom songs that I will write for you and your business. So think about that. You know, artists get paid thousands of dollars to write jingles, custom songs for advertising, commercials, whatever it is, movies. All you need to do is collect the NFTs required and I will write you a custom song or a jingle for the rest of your life once a year as long as you hold those NFTs. Like, that's extremely valuable. Really, brands pay so much money to get custom music so that they don't have to pay royalties from, like, really big artists. So that's a, a really big one. And then free shows. Um, if you hold a certain combination of my NFTs, once a year I'll come and perform a show, private one, for you for free. So imagine... If you're an entrepreneur, you could book me for a show. The bigger I grow, the bigger I grow, let's say I have thousands of fans around the world, you could put on a show and sell 500 tickets and I come for free because when I was not famous, you bought my NFTs and now you charge people to come and see me, but you don't have to pay me, right? Because you have the NFTs and you supported me from the start and you make the profit. So. Music is a really bad, and an artist, an artist is the IP. You can use an artist, right? So when you have an artist at your disposal, that's your, the biggest utility you could possibly have, seriously. So that's why I believe in it so much because it's so clear, it's so straightforward, you know, but people are kind of blinded by greed, you know, the speculative nature of Web3 uh, blinds people by the idea of making so much money, uh, you know, overnight. No, you have to work for money. <laughs> like, that's the reality of things. Like, money doesn't just come to you unless you win the lottery, which is one in a billion times, you know? So, but I, as an artist, I'm giving you something you can monetize on. I'm giving myself to you and you can monetize over me. So, yes, I, do, I think people don't get that. But smart people do. And that's why, you know, I have 1,400 people in my community and people that have invested up to like 50, 60K, you know, in my music because they see it. So, yeah. That's what it's all about. Let's go. Shout out to you, V, your inspiration and a legend. And I agree. People are going to keep supporting more and more what we're doing, what we're building. We have a lot of people here already who are supporting and more people are going to realize the full potential of music NFTs. We still have a ways to go, but that's why we got to keep putting out the dope content. So shout out to you. Shout out to everybody who's here. We're on Music NFT Radio Podcast. If you're listening in on YouTube or any of the podcast sites, make sure to leave a like, a comment, uh, and subscribe to our channel. It's Music NFT Radio on YouTube. Everybody can go subscribe there. Show some love. Leave a like, a comment. Retweet on some of our videos. And let's get it. If you're here on the space, retweet the room. Let's hear if anyone else wants to chime in. It's time. You want to add anything in the combo here? I mean, like, sheesh. I feel like I got to, like, land on the other side of the conversation a little bit. Not saying I don't, you know, feel definitely making points. But... You know, when it comes to, you know, PFP, you know, collections and whatnot, first off, what you're getting is, you know, exclusivity. It's one of one thing, you know, it's, that is, it, it's that one of one token. Second off, you know, it, PFPs usually have something to do with some type of rarity, whether it's being, you know, trait groups or something that, you know, it, that's in the metadata that creates a, you know, higher value for it. Um, next would be like, well, community. All right. The community is what makes the project, in my opinion, because it's like if everyone wants Bitcoin to go to 50K and everyone wants to get there and everyone wants it to get there, what's everyone got to do to get there? Buy in. And if everyone buys in, it gets there. 
So it's a sense of if there's enough, if there, obviously you shouldn't be fucking promising on a dream. But if the momentum's there to complete what you need to get done, I mean, like, I say you got it done. And with any investment. Of course, we're not not negative on PFPs. No, 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 I'm just on the opposite side because I'm going to flip it around. Flip it around. I got you. I got both sides, homie. I got it. Oh, I feel you, bro. (laughs) Much love, dude. And yeah, I mean, I think PFPs have big potential when they're done right. And musicians, you know, they're going to keep making an impact. And as more of the collectors see what's going on here, I think more, you know, unfortunately, people have been scammed in PFPs. People have been rugged before. But, uh, hopefully, music but, NFTs, but we can make you're buying, in for, you're buying in for potential value. You aren't buying in for value that's been created. It's for potential value in the future. That's just, you know, the nature of that NFT. Yeah, man. I mean, it's definitely a little bit speculative, too. And that's that's the nature of it, for sure. Let's hear from Canaman, too. Canaman, what's up, my friend? Hey, man, I, I got a couple of thoughts to share on the subject. You know, running my community over the past year, coming across all these, you know, hundreds and hundreds of projects that I've seen from the beginning and in middle and, you know, you name it. I've kind of noticed three categories with NFTs. There's well, music NFTs and kind of music NFTs. And for now, I put that in the category with kind of the exceptional NFTs where it's very unique and niche because music NFTs are still small and still growing bigger and bigger. But that's one category. Then you've got PFPs and then you've got actual like artist work where someone does an oil painting on canvas or they do some like pencil drawing and they convert it to digital. And the difference is with music and with art both of those products are finished products that have been invested in by those artists. The artists have poured hours, sometimes thousands of dollars, into uh, technology, into resources, into tools. So the value of the NFT is then corresponding with all of that energy and effort put in. Now, with the PFP, on the other hand, they're kind of like starting at the opposite end of everything. PFP collections tend to be generative. They tend to be quicker to create and way more focused on the community, the roadmap, you know, getting the matching uh, symbols on Twitter so you can all go raid spaces. So I think PFPs require additional utility where like music NFTs, the music is the utility to start. Anything beyond the music, beyond the fact that you can play that NFT is just bonus so all the extra you get with dills that's just bonus on top of it which means if you compare it dills has inherently more value than most pfps because again a lot of pfps are built on promises and personally until a pfp project gets like halfway through their roadmap i'm gonna look at them and go you know i like your art i like what you got going on but i want to wait and see i want to see what you're gonna do so those are just my thoughts to add into that. The the fact that people don't appreciate the ability to play an NFT alone is a massive utility. I mean, that's going back to MP3 players when you threw a song on it, brought it to school and brought it to your friends and said, dude, plug in your earbuds real quick. Check out this track I just put on. Put on. Now you can pull up your wallet on your phone, play a song, and you check out this track I just found. So, And the benefit is all profits from that purchase go to the artist they don't get filtered through anything else the artist gets to collect what they deserve take it reinvest it into what they're doing so it's just there's a big difference pfps have such a high requirement in my eyes versus a musician who has a finished piece that puts it out there and says guys support me through this brand new format of transaction i mean that that's just my two cents to add to it yeah, man, that's a great perspective. And I think pro- part of the issue is also we see like these PFPs get such a crazy high floor price for no reason before they built anything, too. So it's not just the mint, it's the secondary market floor prices. And these collections go crazy before they've really proven it. So, you know, we've seen some controversy about doodles, um, moonbirds, some of those other collections that have come out recently. I'm actually making up our. Uh, our little uh, thumbnail now. I'm putting a doodle on it. I'm putting a moonbirds. I mean, if anyone wants to mention any of the other ones that have been noteworthy recently, 
But yeah, there's been some serious controversy over the PFPs, and I think music NFTs are going to make a positive change. So that's what I'm excited to see. So yeah. I couldn't agree more. I just want to, yeah, I, I agree with uh, what you said, Kenna, really. I think, yeah, and I, I'm not saying that all PFPs are bad. Like like I said, I'm part of certain PFP communities because um, also, like it's time said, you know, sometimes the community is the utility um, and whatever things they do, you know, like ev events, you know. I like going to events. And so if they put on cool parties... You know, I, I think that's good utility, you know, or if they give me a good experience or they even if it's just merch, but it's a merch I love to wear or the founder is a person that I like to hang out with. That's utility already, you know, but when you compare it to a piece of art or actual, um, you know, actual things that increase the value, you know, I don't know, I guess it's subjective. But we have to be careful. Like, I feel like right now people are really, really overhyped about things just because there's been a good marketing plan behind it, <laughs> you know? So, because what one thing I've learned in Web3 is you can sell anything, anything. You can sell it as long as you know how to. Um, seriously. Like, yeah. So, I just want to make, you know, build awareness over that as well because... You know, people in Web2 know how valuable artists are. And guess what? They're always trying to take advantage of them. And now, because they know they're valuable. And because they know the artists have imposter, imposter syndrome. But here in Web3, we know how valuable the art is. And, but at the same time, I feel like a lot of us are humble. Because a lot of artists have this, like, aura of, like, I'm going to be, you know, they're snobby, you know? They're, like, stuck up. Whereas the artists here in Web3 hang out with people, right? And, I mean, that's what we do every day. That's what Dill's doing right now. So, yeah, anyway, that's that's my take. Let's go, let's go. Well, that's what's up. It's time. You want to add something? Last thing I'd have to mention is it's still Web3, baby. It's decentralized finance. You're responsible for everything you do here, so do your own research. That's right. <laughs> Very important. Let's go. That's right. Well, let's leave it off with that. It's been an amazing podcast on Music NFT Radio. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe on YouTube. Make sure to go follow Violetta Zeroni. Tap in with her music. Get her NFTs. Get a Dill NFT. Join our Discord, Dilluminati.com. If you're still listening with us, join us there on Discord and join us on the live spaces. Let's go. We're going to keep the spaces going, everyone. We'll keep the